Eastern Arizona College has a long and illustrious history intricately tied to the modern history of the Gila Valley and Graham County. The college is proud of this tradition and its connection with the people of Graham County. The college has provided opportunities to residents of southeastern Arizona and beyond for over 125 years. In its history, EAC has gone through many changes, including being renamed nine times, transitioning from a private to a public college, and expanding its campus from a single adobe building to a multi-campus institution offering classes across three counties. While the college has experienced tremendous growth, its commitment to students continues to shape its programs and services. Chartered in 1888 by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and founded 24 years before Arizona statehood, Eastern Arizona College is Arizona's oldest community college. Early Gila Valley pioneers cared deeply about the quality of their children's education and soon after settling the valley established what was then known as the St. Joseph Stake Academy. The first classes were held on December 8, 1890 with 17 students. Local church and community leader and founder of the town of Thatcher, Christopher Layton was the president of the school's first board of trustees. Classes were first held in a local church building in the small community of Central. Early the next spring, the academy was moved to an adobe building in Thatcher, which was home to a majority of the students. The fledgling academy quickly outgrew the one-room building and in 1891 moved to a new brick building built by Christopher Layton, where it remained for 16 years. Several years later, the school began to fall behind financially. Even though many of the teachers often took their pay in farm produce, by 1895 the academy was seriously in debt. That December, an epidemic struck, claiming the lives of many children in the Gila Valley, forcing the school to close for three weeks. When it reopened, attendance faltered, and in February of 1896, the school closed its doors. Despite the setback, in the spring of 1898, the board decided to construct a $1,500 addition to the building and reopened the school in September of 1898 under the direction of Andrew Kimball. School officials emphasized a curriculum that would be of practical benefit to students. Telegraphy was a popular class now that Morse code messages could be sent over newly strung telegraph lines. Engineering, nursing, shorthand, typing, and practical business classes drew students from throughout the Arizona Territory. Due to enrollment growth over the next several years, the existing facilities were no longer adequate. So in 1903, $2,200 were appropriated by the College Board for the purchase of property in Thatcher, on which to erect a new 21-room academy building. The Board of Education appropriated an additional $12,000 toward the cost, with an additional $14,000 coming from donations. The original construction estimate was $26,009.68. The cornerstone was laid in 1908. The construction firm was paid $28,200, and the architect received $210 for his services. The building became known affectionately as Old Main. Throughout the next several years, the college continued to grow as enrollment increased and new programs and athletic teams were developed. During the 1920s, Gila College often made headlines on sports pages. In 1926, in only its second year, the football team beat the University of Arizona Wildcats. The men's basketball team took the state title three years running and in 1927 had a perfect record of 33 wins and no losses. This earned the team a berth in that year's national AAU Junior College Tournament. The school also developed other programs that were just as successful as its athletic teams, including one of the largest music programs in the area and a renowned theater program. Over a nine-year period, from 1927 to 1935, a highlight of the school year was the Red Knolls Pageant, a theatrical production presented in a natural amphitheater with outstanding acoustics. Thousands of people attended these pageants, which raised awareness of the college throughout the Southwest. In an effort to expand the curriculum and number of classes offered, the college began a night program in 1931 with 17 courses. But the school didn't have the funds to pay the teachers, and incredibly, the faculty members teaching night classes donated their teaching time. 
In late 1932, the church decided to close the college unless local residents agreed to assume control. The Graham County Board of Supervisors scheduled an election for March of 1933 to decide the college's fate. Voters saved the school by a vote of 1,564 to 366. Soon after, in 1938, high school level courses were eliminated from the curriculum. When World War II ended, the campus began to boom as young men returned to take advantage of the GI Bill. By the mid-1950s, a new library was needed and the Alumni Association took up the task of raising funds. A $15,000 donation from successful alumnus Miss Eddie Lee kicked off the fund drive for the Alumni Library, which, with additions and renovations, still serves the campus today. John Mickelson, a state senator and former president of the College Governing Board, sponsored legislation to establish the state system of junior colleges. County voters approved the college's entrance into the state system by the overwhelmingly positive vote of 4,233 to 29. On July 1, 1962, Eastern Arizona Junior College became the first member of Arizona's junior college system. Thanks to the new law, the state began to provide a portion of the school's maintenance and operating costs. In anticipation of future growth, the college tripled the size of its 16-acre campus by purchasing the 34 acres that are now known as South Campus. A building boom ensued. Plans were drawn up for a new gymnasium, football field and stadium, baseball diamond, softball field, 13 classrooms, and three large lecture halls. The new campus was dedicated on September 21, 1963, and a year later, a new men's dormitory, Mark Allen Hall, was dedicated as well. Built on the spot where Christopher Layton's home once stood. Construction on South Campus continued for the next several years and included a new industrial technology facility built in 1967. This facility made it possible for many new courses to be offered in vocational education. Fine arts programs also benefited from the building boom. Since its earliest days, EAC had been the hub of most cultural programs in the Gila Valley, but its music, dance, and theater programs were hampered by inadequate facilities. Jump-started by a $50,000 donation from alumnus Walter Johnson, plans were made for a new auditorium and performing arts center with a full-size stage and a seating capacity of 1,000. The Fine Arts Center was dedicated on August 28, 1972 and continues to serve the college today. In 1979, tragedy struck when two fires in a week's time destroyed Old Main and after nearly 70 years of service, it was raised and replaced by a new administration building. In 2003, the administrative offices were moved once again into the new Student Services Building, the anchor of the college's expanded middle campus, which included a 55,000 square foot academic programs building with classrooms, faculty offices, and a 100 seat lecture hall. Classrooms in the Academic Programs Building include the latest instructional technology, enhancing teacher presentations and student learning experiences. The new middle campus also added the 76-foot Memorial Bell Tower, which has become a central focal point of campus that serves as a prominent landmark and announces the presence of the college in the Gila Valley. In late 2007, the tower was formally dedicated by college president Mark Bryce, decorated with bronze reliefs sculpted by former EAC art instructor Justin Fairbanks and his family. The tower honors the people who have made the college what it is today. Pioneers, veterans, families, and faculty, alumni, benefactors, and taxpayers. The Nursing Education Center was added to Middle Campus in 2011 the 15,000 square foot facility consolidated the college's nursing program under one roof. The center includes a clinical care simulation room, a state-of-the-art skills lab, media-enriched classrooms, and a 24-station computer lab. In 1988, a year-long centennial celebration was held in honor of EAC's 100th anniversary. Banquets, reunions, parades, and performances were held to commemorate the school's milestone. Thousands of alumni returned to campus for the celebration, and proclamations and congratulatory greetings were received from the White House, Arizona's governor, and many others. 
First accredited by the North Central Association in 1917, EAC received its first 10-year accreditation, the highest available in 1986. This achievement was repeated in 1996. The college has recently committed to a new accreditation process through the Higher Learning Commission, increasing the rigor of the accreditation review and fostering the college's culture of continuous improvement. In 2012, the college entered into a landmark partnership with Arizona State University, giving students the opportunity to earn select bachelor's degrees from ASU on the college's Thatcher campus. This provides an innovative model for bachelor's degree completion in Arizona. This new partnership, along with EAC's long-term relationship with Northern Arizona University, demonstrates EAC's commitment to higher education in the Gila Valley. And in 2013, the college celebrated its 125th anniversary with proclamations from the Arizona Senate and House of Representatives. As part of the celebration, President Mark Bryce declared, As we find ourselves at this crossroads of history, we should look back to the past with gratitude for those who came before us, who sacrificed so this day could be a reality. A small school, started and nourished for all the right reasons, has become a mighty force for good on the earth. Today, after more than 125 years of illustrious history, EAC's reputation for academic rigor and fiscal responsibility is second to none in the state's community college system. EAC consistently implements educational innovations, both small and large, as it serves students, faculty, and the surrounding communities. From Christopher Layton to members of today's governing board, generations of dedicated governing officials, staff, and faculty, along with a committed community of citizens, have worked tirelessly to make EAC one of Arizona's academic and cultural highlights. With each succeeding year, EAC is better positioned to continue its outstanding record of service to southeastern Arizona and to the state at large. We work hard to ensure that for our students, futures begin at Eastern Arizona College.